It's almost unbelievable that a PS2 can play a select library of games using nothing more than a special memory card adapter and a micro SD card. But one magical splash of color later, and you'll be gaming as a secret agent, driving on sidewalks in a taxi cab, or building the roller coaster of your dreams. It's true, and I'm about to show you everything it takes to get this special memory card adapter working on your PlayStation 2 fat or slim model. The adapter is available at the Helder's Game Tech website. I have it linked for you in the description. Although the adapter shows us sold out at the time of this video, get signed up on the waitlist. Helder Custom 3D prints the cases for these, and they have his specially designed PCB board inside that allows the use of a micro SD card through the PlayStation 2's memory card slot. And as you're about to find out later in the video, it's well worth the wait time and the 20 US dollars it takes you to get one. You'll need a free Mac boot card in order to launch your games. Specifically, you'll need a Sony branded memory card that supports Magic Gate. If you don't already have one, there are two ways to go about this. The first is I have a video linked for you in the description to teach you how to build a free Mac boot card from scratch on your PS2. You can also buy the free Mac boot card directly from Helder's website when you buy the adapter. Don't disregard this information from Helder's website about card compatibility, it's important. One of the most popular and common brands, SanDisk, does not typically work well with this adapter. I tested my own SanDisk micro SD card with it and just like listed on the website, it did not work correctly. But the PNY Elite X 128GB micro SD card worked to perfection. It's the exact card I'm using in this video and I have a link to it in the description if you need to pick one up to use with your own adapter. With those prerequisites out of the way, download this zip file from Helder's website. It's linked in the description. It has free McBoot and OPL, which you're going to need to make the adapter work correctly. Once you have the zip file downloaded, extract it to your computer. And once you have the file extracted, delete the zip file to eliminate clutter out of your downloads folder. Now that the folder's unzipped, insert a USB drive formatted in FAT32 into your computer. Double click into the newly uncompressed folder. You'll need to grab everything that you see inside the folder and drag and drop it directly onto the root of the USB FAT32 formatted drive. Once it's done, remove the USB drive from your computer. Let's get your games copied over to the micro SD card so that you can play them on your PS2. I've pre-staged four game files in a folder called ROMs on C on my computer. This way we can check them out and see the formats that they need to be in. In every instance of the game you want to play, they need to be in .iso format. This includes CD content. If you try to copy content over in binq format for CD games, they will not work correctly. Format in FAT32 format the micro SD card you intend to use. Insert it into your computer. First, if you plan to play CD games, make a new folder on the root of the micro SD card and call it CD. Next, create another folder on the root of the micro SD card. This one's going to be for DVD based games, so call it DVD. Once you have these folders created, you can drag and drop your content into these folders. Here I'm dragging and dropping two DVD based ISO games. And I'm also going to bring in the two CD based games. This way when we utilize the micro SD memory card adapter, you can see that both of these types of games will play. But how do you know which games will work and which games won't? Fortunately, there's a list for that. It's linked for you in the description. This Google spreadsheet is community maintained and has a great list of which games are working and which games are still work in progress. If it's green, it's going to work great. If it's yellow, it's got some challenges. And if it's red, it ain't going to work. Remove the USB drive from your computer and insert it into your PlayStation 2. Also, insert your free McBoot memory card into the leftmost memory card slot. Power on your PlayStation 2 system. It should now come up to the free McBoot main menu. Use the D-pad to scroll through the list of choices until you see either Launch Elf or You Launch Elf. Select it with the X button to launch it. From the main menu of You Launch Elf, press the circle button to launch the browser. We need to copy one folder and one file from the USB drive to your memory card. Here's how that's done. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at things. Do you see that red highlight on MC0? Use the D-pad to scroll that highlight down to Mass. That's your Mass USB storage device. Select it with the circle button. If you've never copied OPL over to your memory card, we'll need to do that. And if you have an old version, we need to update it with this beta version. Use the D-pad to scroll down to the OPL folder. Press the right one button on your controller. It's the right shoulder button, not the trigger button. It pulls up a pop-up menu. You'll see there's an arrow there on the word copy. 
Press the circle button to select copy. Let's go over to the memory card. Press triangle to go back to the list of drives and storage locations. Use the D-pad to scroll the red highlight back up to the top to MC0. Select it with the circle button. First, let's take a look at what to do if you already have an older version of OPL on your memory card. Use the D-pad to scroll the red highlight down to the OPL folder. Press the right one button on your PlayStation 2 controller. It pulls up that pop-up menu again. This time, use the D-pad to move that highlight arrow down to the word delete and select it with the circle button. Then, at the confirmation prompt, select OK with the circle button. This will delete the existing OPL folder. Once again, press the right one button on your controller to activate the pop-up menu. Use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to paste and select it with the circle button. This will paste in the updated OPL folder that you copied from your USB drive. Okay, that's half the battle, but we've also got an ELF file that we need to copy in from the USB drive to the memory card. Press triangle to go back one level in the navigation. Again, use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to mass and select it with the circle button. There are two folders here you need to be concerned with. The first one applies to all models of the PlayStation 2 up to 758XX and then the second one applies to the slim models, model 758XX and higher. In other words, if you have a slim model that's 75800 or higher, you need to use this folder. If you have any other version of PS2, use this folder. Since this example uses the fat model PlayStation 2, select this folder with the circle button. In either of these folders, there's a single ELF file that launches OPL. Use the D-pad to scroll the red highlight down to that file. Just like before, press the right one button, then press circle for copy. To paste this file to your memory card, press triangle to go back one level in the navigation. Then press triangle once again to go back to the list of storage devices. Use the D-pad to scroll the highlight all the way up to MC0 and select it with the circle button. This time, instead of pasting on the root level of the memory card, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the folder called boot. Select that folder with the circle button. If you already have a pre-existing version of the open PS2 loader here, let's delete it. Use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to the OPM PS2 LD.L file. Press the right one button on your PlayStation 2 controller to activate the pop-up menu. Just like before, press the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to delete and select it with the circle button. Then at the confirmation prompt, select OK with the circle button to delete this file. Press right one on the controller again. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to paste, and select paste with the circle button. This will paste in the updated OPL file that you need. Now that your copy and paste work is done, power off your PlayStation 2. Remove the USB drive from your PlayStation 2, but leave the memory card in place. Now power your PS2 back on. Let's make sure that OPL is being linked to correctly in the Free McBoot main menu. Use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of Free McBoot choices until you see the Free McBoot configurator. Select it with the X button to launch it. We're back to the usual X and O button assignments now, so press X to continue. Once again, let's zoom in a little. From the list of available menu options, use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to Configure OSDSYS Options. That stands for On-Screen Display System Settings. Select this option with X to continue. Take a look up near the top of the screen and you'll see a listing that says Configure Item 1 and some menu listing from your Free McBoot menu listings. Use the D-pad to scroll right or left until you see either a blank space or a pre-existing menu listing for OPL. That's what I'm going to demonstrate in this case. Once you find either a blank listing or OPL, select it with the X button. Do you see how OPL is listed in lowercase in the menu titling right now? Let's change that to uppercase so that you can see how it impacts the menu system. Select that listing with the X button. This is going to pull up a virtual keyboard on screen. Use the circle button on your PS2 controller to backspace over the existing characters. Now you can use the D-pad to move the highlight to select any characters you want from the virtual keyboard and lock them in with the X button to continue. Then use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to OK in the bottom left corner and select it with the X button to continue. Okay, we've established what the menu is going to say, but we haven't established where it's going to link to. That's where this next step comes in. Use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to Path 1 and select it with the X button. You'll see the list of storage locations again, just like you did in You Launch Elf. This time, select MC0 with the X button. Use the D-pad to scroll down to the Boot folder and select Boot with the X button. 
This is where you copied over the OPL file originally. Use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to the OPMPS2LD.L file and select it with the X button. The menu changes are made, but they're not saved yet. Use the D-pad to scroll down to return and select it with X. Now at the submenu, use the D-pad to scroll that highlight all the way down to the bottom of the page to return and select return with the X button. In the last list of menu choices near the bottom, there's a listing here that says save CNF to MC0. That's going to save this configuration to your memory card. Select it with the X button. You'll see a confirmation message in red in the top left corner of the screen that your settings have been saved. Power off your PS2. Insert the micro SD to memory card adapter into slot number two on your system. But don't insert the micro SD card just yet. We'll get to it in just a second. Once Free McBoot's main menu appears on your PlayStation 2, use the D-pad to scroll down through the listings until you see OPL. Hey look, it's in all caps like we just changed in the configurator. Select it with the X button to launch OPL. When this beta version of OPL appears, it can be a little confusing because the listings down at the bottom say USB drive when you actually have a micro SD memory card adapter, but that's the one you want. Select the USB icon with the X button. Now you can insert the micro SD card. Make sure you insert it with the shiny pins facing up. Insert the card into the topmost area on the memory card adapter, then push it into place until it clicks in. The reason I recommend this workflow is, it causes OPL to look for the content on the card the first time you use both the card and OPL. See that icon that appeared in the bottom right corner? What that's telling you is, it's searching the card and cataloging its content. Now that you see that the games are loaded up and ready to play, remember that there's another important part of this equation. And if you ignore this, it's not going to work. You need that free boot card, and this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description will show you how to make your own in a matter of minutes.